So we did the review on the S fans dock and a lot of people kind of lost their minds when the switch was put on its back which makes sense to a degree i mean there are vents back there so a lot of people automatically assume that if those vents are covered up when placed on say a table that it will overheat However, when I looked around, I didn't see any actual testing done for this theory. And that's kind of what it is until it's tested. It's a theory. So I thought it was, it's up to me, since I pretty much abuse my Switch as it is anyway, to open it up and test with a temperature probe and multimeter. It's done well in the past, and it gives us a decent enough reading. It's not going to be perfect, but it's as good as we can get it until the Switch is inevitably hacked and we can have a temperature sensing program built in. So we're going to take the Switch apart. I know I have pretty much abused this switch to death, but I've pretty much told it at this point that listen, this is the last time you're coming apart and then I won't bug you anymore. Although I did say that last time I took it apart, so hopefully it's forgotten by now. So there's only one thing left to do is take it apart, pop the temperature probe in and just record a ton of temperatures. Just gotta find my switch. Evan, have you seen the switch anywhere? It's not on this table. Oh, not again. Now with the switch back inside, let's get it open and install the probe. As you see here, the probe is set to measure temperatures from the outside of the chip. While the centermost part of the chip is the hottest and will give the most accurate reading, we have to settle with this approach until we have access to an internal temperature program. The ambient temperature at the time of recording is 21 degrees Celsius or roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind, ambient temperature plays a large role in how hot a system gets and will affect any electronic device that relies on air cooling, which includes the switch. Basically, if the air around you is hot, the switch will also be hotter since it is using that air to cool its heatsink. While laying on its back, the switch would hover around 42 degrees Celsius the entire time when playing Mario Kart. At times, it would fall below and other times it would jump above 42. However, it never came close to 43. Generally, it will shift depending on what is happening on screen. Now, I wasn't expecting the system to get hot when running on battery, since there is a limit to how much power can be drawn to the system with the battery itself acting as the bottleneck. This was around the same temperatures I recorded previously when I did this test with the system up on its kickstand. So let's talk about the switch when it has the battery removed from the equation. With the switch now connected to this fan's portable dock, we can see what the system will run at when it's on its back at full blast. During extended gameplay with Mario Kart docked with the Switch on its back, it jumped to a temperature of 49 degrees Celsius. I could not seem to get the system to 50 degrees Celsius as it would stall at roughly 49.5 at its highest. Speaking of Zelda, let's jump over to that game since it seems to stress the Switch more than Mario Kart. We can see here I was able to get the Switch to a temperature just north of 51 and a half degrees. Alright, pretty good so far, but let's try out the game that made the Switch get the hottest back in my old video, Fast. RMX. With fast RMX blasting away on screen, I was able to record the highest temperature under these circumstances at 52 and a half degrees Celsius. Overall, pretty good with the Switch laying on its back. While most people would be satisfied at this point knowing the Switch is fine when on its back, I wanted to push further and tried to figure out ways to make things harder on the cooling. First thing I thought of was to put a shirt on top of the Switch. Maybe someone has a messy room and accidentally leaves their shirt over top of the Switch. Now we're talking, I was able to get the temperatures just over 53 and a half degrees with fast RMX. Well, let's make things even harder on the little system and add a towel underneath. See, I figured some people may lay it on the carpet when playing, and this could cause insulation on the back of the system. I threw the shirt back on top as well, really just to get the system cooking. After nearly 30 minutes of constant RMX gameplay, I was able to slowly climb my way to just over 60 degrees Celsius. It seems the towel underneath and the shirt on top of the system was enough to insulate the heat and build up inside the unit. After removing both, you can see the sharp and rapid drop in temperature back to a safer range in the lower 50s. This makes sense seeing as the only thing really keeping the heat in at the time was the excessive use of a towel and a shirt covering up pretty much any exhaust that the system had to offer. So with these tests all done, there was still one other thing I needed to figure out, and that is what is the maximum temperature the system can do before it shuts itself off if you're not familiar with it, a lot of systems like the Xbox One or the PS4 have like a max roof temperature that the system will shut down to save itself. What is the Switch's max temperature? Well, I went through a bunch of scenarios trying to figure out how to pretty much max the temperature in the system. 
and I came to a conclusion that the probably the most dangerous method was the best, and that is unplugging the fan and making the system pretty much overheat itself since it doesn't have a fan to cool it. Now, I feel like this goes without saying, but I should probably say it anyway. Do not try this at home. All right, guys, here we go. This is the Nintendo Switch running without its fan active. To say I wasn't nervous would be lying, but on we go. It took longer than I thought to reach maximum temperature. In fact, I was nearing the end of my race in fast RMX before it crashed and shut down. The last temperature recorded with the Pro before shutdown was 67 degrees Celsius, at which point the screen went black and it simply said on screen that the system was getting too hot and it had to shut down. This means that even with my towel and shirt sandwiched around the system, I still had a about a seven degree buffer before shutdown. Now let's stop for a minute because I'm sure you have some questions, notably, how can that still work if it's laying on its back and covering up the air vents? I mean, it needs to breathe, and it breathes through those air vents, right? Well, not necessarily. See, the back vents were designed the way they are on purpose. Now, what I'm referring to is the recessed vents on the back. Have you noticed these don't sit flush with the back of the Switch? Have you ever wondered why that's the case? Things like these are usually overlooked, but can make a big difference in cooling. The concave nature of the vents provide airflow, even if the system is on its back. Against a flat surface, the system is not airtight, and air can find its way inside. For that matter, the entire system is not airtight, whether it's the sides by the Joy-Cons or the lips around the edges. Air can find its way in outside of the back vents. Now, the ideal situation is to have the switch with the back vents upright and not have them obstructed. However, as shown here, the difference in temperatures are minimal and well below the shutdown threshold that it's programmed to have. And really, the big deciding factor with the switch when it comes to overheating seems to be ambient temperature, as even described by people with experiences of the switch overheating. Nintendo themselves have even gone on record, you can check it on their website, where they give you a maximum operating ambient temperature that you should be operating the switch in with 35 degrees Celsius, which converts to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's it for the video today, guys. While usually people will assume these kinds of things, I like to test them and see if that's the case. And in this case, the switch is fine on its back, even if it's plugged into a portable dock like this fan's dock. Doesn't matter. Again, it can still breathe. It does not breathe specifically to, through those two vents, even though the vents are recessed, which means it can still breathe when laying on a table. The only time you'll get into trouble is if you lay it on a carpet. I don't recommend anyone put any kind of electronic that needs to breathe on a carpet. It's just a bad idea because the carpet will insulate around that item, whether it's a PlayStation, an Xbox, or in this case, a Nintendo Switch. I see people put laptops on their beds all the time and they overheat. They don't understand why insulation happens. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something today. I hope it was interesting to see temperatures. And now you know you can rest easy that if you play a game like the Monopoly game coming out, where they use the system as a board and put it on a table, it's fine. You can do that. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you next time.